question one was, how do you know that Christianity is any more true than Islam based on what you said about truth and knowledge earlier today? Okay. Well, I don't believe Christianity is true. I know it's true. Um, and that means that I have a true belief about it that's based on adequate reasons. So I would first of all start with why I believe in God. And I would give evidences like we now know the universe began to exist. Uh, it hasn't been here forever. And universes can't pop into existence out of nothing without anything causing them. So there had to be something supernatural that was above the universe that caused the universe to come into existence. And the best candidate for that something is a supreme being. We also know that there are several um, um, illustrations of very, very deep design in the universe. If you take a DNA molecule, the kind of information in that single DNA molecule in one cell of your body contains more information than the library at USC where I did my doctorate. Uh, information comes from informers or minds. It doesn't come from inanimate objects. So if there's information in a DNA molecule, there has to be some kind of an informer or great mind that put it in there. So I would, I would use four, five, six, seven arguments to establish that there is a personal God. And what that would do would be it would, it would rule in monotheism, it would rule out uh, Hinduism, and it would rule out Buddhism. Because Buddhism is, ag is an agnostic religion, at least the Theravada uh, versions of it are. And Hinduism, popular Hinduism, believes in 330 million gods. And so I couldn't believe either one of those because if you do, you have no explanation for the origin of the universe and things like that. So why, why pick Christianity over Islam? Two reasons. The first one is you ought to pick a religion that does the best job of diagnosing what's wrong with human beings and providing a solution to their problems. And while Islam may have some good teachings in it, I believe the religion of Jesus does a far better job of penetrating more deeply into what's wrong with us. And there are a whole host of things that are said, uh, and providing a solution then does Islam. I'll give you an illustration. Uh, Allah uh, is, is a sovereign Lord who does what he wants to do. And his moral law doesn't make any sense. Uh, this is called voluntarism. And what that means is Allah wills whatever he wants to will, and there is no reason, rhyme or reason for what he wills. He wills whatever he wants. That's not true of the Christian God. The Christian God doesn't will whatever he wants. He wills what his character dictates. So the moral law doesn't flow from God's will in the Bible. It flows from his character. The moral law in Islam flows from the arbitrary will of Allah. And so uh, uh, one reason that I'm a Christian as opposed to uh, a Muslim is the Muslim view of the moral law uh, is totally and completely arbitrary and it isn't, doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, Allah is not a God of love. And so I was talking to a Muslim uh, a couple of years ago and I said, tell me about your love relationship with Allah. Uh, I, tell me about some times of really great intimacy you've had with him. I, I'd, I'd love to hear about that. Well, he looked at me like I'd hit him over the head with a two by four. He said, I have, uh, we, uh, that is not our religion. Allah is sovereign. We, he is transcendent. We obey his commands and, and hope for the best. And I said, well, you know, uh, the God I worship is my daddy because the, the word that J Jesus of Nazareth used in all of his prayers was the word Abba. And the word Abba was the word little children used for their papa. And so when Jesus used the word Abba, he was, he was telling people, view the creator of the universe as your papa, as your daddy, as your, fa as your endearing, agape-loving father who invites you to be his son and friend. And I said, by the way, God calls his followers friends. And I said, I've had a number of times when I have not been able to love myself, that I've made it through because I know the love of the Lord Jesus and his father are stable toward me no matter what kind of a person I am. And I have sensed his intimacy in worship and in prayer. 
Now, that is a human need, ladies and gentlemen, and it's met in Christianity, but it's not met in Islam. So the first reason I'm a Christian as opposed to a Muslim is that I think it addresses the human condition better than the alternative, and I've illustrated that by the, the reasonable nature of the Christian moral law and the, the presence of the love of God, which are not present in Islam. The second reason I'm a Christian is that it has the backing of supernatural evidence that stands behind it in two ways. First, fulfilled prophecy. Uh, there are prophecies that are written for centuries before the Messiah came that Jesus of Nazareth fulfilled, including the fact that he, was he would be crucified, he would be buried in a rich man's grave, uh, that he would be born in Bethlehem. Now, that's weird. That's weird. I was sitting at a university, uh, at the University of Vermont, actually, and I was talking to an un uh, unbelieving Jew. And I turned to Isaiah 53, and I said, well, I'd like to read this to you. And it's about the crucifixion. And I said, where do you think that is? And he said, well, that's, I, I've not read the Gospels. It's, it's one of the Gospels. And I said, that's close. It's Isaiah 53. And um, so fulfilled prophecy provides, you know, you can loosen up and la laugh at some of this if you want to, <laughs> even though I'm not that funny. Um, Isaiah 53. Second would be the kind of historical evidence that you find in books like The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. There is solid historical evidence that the New Testament documents were written very, very shortly after Jesus died. They weren't written two generations later. They were written when eyewitnesses were around. Archaeology regularly confirms them, and there's strong historical evidence for the resurrection. Contrast that with the Quran. Um, Muhammad goes into a cave and comes out and says, an angel revealed a good bit of the Quran to me. Believe, trust me. Well, how do we know he wasn't lying through his teeth? He gave no evidence that that was true. You just have to believe it, but not so. You don't have to just believe the Bible. There is historical evidence that backs it. 